right like this. Okay. Meanwhile, the left demonstrates that they do, in fact, have complete Trump derangement syndrome. So Janine Pirro of Fox News was on The View. How does Janine Pirro get to be on, on The View and I don't get to be on The View? What is the deal here, guys? Okay, what is this? I've been begging you to book me on The View for literally years at this point. Now, I understand you don't want to have me on The View. I get you don't want to have me on The View because it's going to get weird and ugly. But that's the whole point. Don't you want it to be good TV? So anyway, they have Janine Pirro on and it does get weird and ugly. So Janine Pirro says to Whoopi Goldberg that she has Trump derangement syndrome, which is clearly true. And things get wild. For you. Here's my question for you because you talk about you, you talk about. I am not. Judge. Nobody no, is. I, no, oh, yeah. Did you just point at me? Yeah. Listen, I don't have Trump God. derangement. Let me tell you what I have. Okay, and then she it gets crazier from there. Whoopi eventually goes so nuts that she essentially throws Janine Pirro off the set because Janine Pirro says that Whoopi Goldberg has Trump derangement syndrome, which she clearly does. Here is here is Whoopi Goldberg losing her mind, saying, "I'm done," and then and then bringing this nutty segment to a crashing halt. You know what's horrible? What's when, horrible when the president of the United States whips up cities. people to beat no. the hell out of people. No. Say goodbye. Let me go. I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Judge Jeanine Pirro, for both the liars, yeah. leaders, and liberals. Okay, and so it ends like that. But then it gets even worse. So Jeanine Pirro was on Sean Hannity's radio show the other day, and Jeanine Pirro explains what happened directly after that little tiff. When I went off the stage, Sean, uh, I was walking downstairs, uh, and I said something like, Whoopi, I fought for victims my whole life, and she came at me as I was leaving, and she said, F you, in my face, literally spitting at me, F you, get the F out of this building. Okay, so obviously she does not have Trump derangement syndrome, Whoopi Goldberg. Obviously she's a completely sane person, having normal political discourse. This is the level to which things have sunk. Okay, the level to which they, I think Whoopi Goldberg is representative of a hardcore base of leftists. That this is how they feel. That anyone who disagrees with them is an evil, evil human being. And you can't even have a discussion about the issues. Now, look, Janine Pirro is a very pro-Trump guest. There's no question. But they knew that when they booked her. If you're going to have Janine Pirro on, you at least have to let her talk. This idea that you bring on a guest and you don't let them talk is so beyond absurd to me. I don't understand it at all. When we do our Sunday specials here on the Ben Shapiro Show, one of the things that I do is I bring in people who disagree. I brought in Sam Harris. I brought in Eric Weinstein. I bring in people from the left all the time. We invite tons of leftist guests who won't even come because they don't want to do an interview. And I let them talk for like 15 minutes at a stretch because you want to know what they think. So then you can critique what they think. But the left has decided that even having these conversations is to grant credibility to a side so evil that they must not be heard. And you know, Whoopi Goldberg has a slot on that show every single day. Everybody in the audience knows what Whoopi Goldberg thinks about these things. Wouldn't it behoove Whoopi Goldberg and the folks on The View to at least let Janine Pirro make her point of view known? Especially because you know the audience is going to laugh at Janine Pirro anyway. Because it's a View audience. It just it demonstrates real cowardice. I, you know, props to Bill Maher. Props to Bill Maher. Bill Maher had me on a couple of weeks ago. And props to Bill Maher, who actually let me talk. We had a reasonable conversation. We disagreed about nearly everything. His audience was against me. He acknowledged that at the very beginning. And then we had a reasonable conversation. Good for people like Bill Maher, really. Because there are very few of these folks left in American discourse. And Whoopi Goldberg and Joy Behar on The View demonstrate it pretty much every day. It's really, really quite pathetic. Okay, so let's get into the mailbag. Let's jump right in. So Neil says, after her appearance on The View, Judge Jeanine was apparently cursed out and forced to leave the building by Whoopi Goldberg. Does her experience on The View deter you from wanting to appear on it? Excellent first question, Neil. The answer is... No, I want to go on it more than ever because I think I can have a good discussion with Whoopi if she will allow us to have such a good discussion. Especially because I think that so many folks on the left want to box everybody on the right into the you're an evil, mangy, terrible, horrible human being. And people on the left have a surprisingly hard time doing that with people who are not terrible, horrible human beings. I don't consider myself in that category. So I'm happy to have any time a reasonable conversation about these issues. I think that's exactly the reason why some folks on The View don't want to have me on the top rhetoric about Trump. It's, they, they just can't help themselves. They have to go over the top on every element. So here's Whoopi Goldberg talking about Donald Trump. And it's not just that she disagrees with what Trump is doing. Donald Trump is now, you guessed it, the Taliban. We have a leader who has repeatedly dem demeaned women, right. wants to defund organizations that benefit women, calling on the media to shut up, specifically wants to give preferential treatment based on religion. Uh, are these values really much different than the Taliban's? Mm. I mean... Yes, they are. It turns out that Donald Trump is not the Taliban. He's not in favor of honor killings. Donald Trump, in fact, 
It's to stop the Taliban from coming in the country that he's implementing some of these immigration policies. That is the basic idea behind all of this. And I'd be very surprised if in the future his immigration moratorium does not extend to Afghanistan. Okay, the fact is Donald Trump's entire stated purpose with regard to stopping an influx of immigrants from countries like Yemen and Somalia is because he doesn't want the culture of certain areas of the world infiltrating. What he means by that is radical Islam. It's not a Muslim ban because radical Islam and Islam are not the same thing, but it is an attempt to fight the infiltration of radical Islam into the West. So no, Donald Trump is not like the Taliban. The idea that Donald Trump is the Taliban because he is, at least in policy, pro-life. The idea that Donald Trump is the Taliban because Donald Trump doesn't want me to pay for your contraceptives. The idea that Donald Trump is the Taliban because Donald Trump is undertaking immigration reform that is in large part moderate. I mean, it really is. Again, of the 10 most populous Muslim countries on earth, nine of them are still able to send whoever they want to the United States. Citizens from those countries can enter. And there are going to be lots of exceptions to Donald Trump's new immigration policy. The Democrats cannot help themselves. The left has to, they have to portray Donald Trump as Satan more than Satan. And there, there, is, there is something here that I think is kind of fascinating. And that is on both sides, on both sides of the aisle, there's a tendency to attribute to the other side some sort of masterful genius. So on the left, instead of them just saying, Donald Trump, kind of incompetent, doing some things I don't like, meh, right? Which is, if you're a leftist, that's sort of what you would be saying if you're a relatively rational leftist at this point. Donald Trump is doing things I don't like, but man, he really doesn't even know what he's doing. I mean, this is pretty incompetent. That's, that's what, if I were on the left, that's what I would be saying at this point. But instead of doing that, they have to attribute to Donald Trump satanic, all-knowing power. Right? Donald Trump is secretly the Taliban. He's secretly Hitler. He secretly has a plan to take over everything and run it. Ooh. Right? And on the right, we used to do the same thing with Obama. It wasn't just that Obama was incompetent in the rollout of Obamacare. It was all part of his evil plan. Right? Everything that, that Obama did was all part. It was all part of the plan. Right? It was, it was all part of this evil, evil plan. Here's the truth. Most of the people in government suck at their jobs. Because most people in America suck at their jobs. Most adults suck at everything. Okay, the great lie of being an adult is that other adults know what they're doing. They generally don't. We all sort of muddle through, and then we hope for the best. The same is true in government. Because we attribute this level of mastery to government, we think it matters so much who heads the government. And when someone we like is in charge, we want that person to have more power. Because after all, if he's our side, we think he's the master of the universe, right? So when Donald Trump botched this, this executive order rollout, he had people saying it's 40 chess. It's 40 chess. No, it's not 40 chess, okay? If it's 40 chess, it's the kind of 40 chess like in Star Wars where you don't play chess with the Wookiee because he gets mad and rips out your arms, right? It's not actually Donald Trump playing four-dimensional chess in time, right? That's not what's going on here. But because there are so many people who have a religious belief that our leaders know what they're doing, they say, give them more power, they know what they're doing. It hasn't been true for 100 years. We've muddled through anyway, but it hasn't been true for 100 years. You want to actually have a better country? Stop treating the people in government as though they're experts and know what they're doing all the time with evil plans or good plans and just say, you know what, whether they're evil, whether they're good, let's just cut the power of government totally and then it won't matter because they're incompetent. It won't matter if they're evil, it won't matter if they're good, they can't do anything. Right? What I would prefer is if we treated Washington, D.C. like it was the DMV and took as much power away as humanly possible. Okay? This, this, everybody is trying to turn... Donald Trump into Darth Vader on the left. And on the right, everybody tried to turn Barack Obama into Darth Vader. And I, listen, I think Obama was in many ways more competent than Trump is at a lot of things. And I think he had more plans than Trump does. I think Trump is pretty ad hoc. But, Donald, but, but Obama wasn't in charge of things either. It turns out very few people are actually Darth Vader. Very few people are actually capable of being Darth Vader. And so that means that we should actually take power away from them. And the, if you're really that worried about Darth Vader, by the way, on the left, if you're really that worried about Donald Trump being Darth Vader, how about this? Instead of him running the empire, let's downsize the empire so it's just the most Isley DMV. The American people. Nowhere is this more obvious than when it comes to disdain for religion. So yesterday on The View, Joy Behar, who is just an insufferable human being, uh, Joy, which, again, Joy, have me on, have me on your show. Right? We've been, I, I know that's a hell of a pitch. You're insufferable. Have me on your show. But nonetheless... Uh, the View, you know, they, I, I think they are probably a little afraid to have me on that show, which I would be too if I were their producers. Uh, in any case, Joy Behar uh, goes after Mike Pence yesterday in the most disgusting terms about his religious observance. If I want it's that. one thing to talk to Jesus. It's another thing when Jesus talks to you. Exactly. Okay, well, that's different. I'm Jesus. That's different. That's mental illness, if I'm not correct. But I'm, no, I'm being... hearing voices. Okay, so... Just to be straight about how the left views religious people, if you say that you heard the voice of God, 
Okay, what you mean usually, okay, let me just explain. On behalf of religious people everywhere, when you say that you got a message from God, you don't actually mean that God sent you an email. Okay, it's not Bruce Almighty. This is not God picks up the phone and calls you. It's not Joan of Arc, you're hearing actual godly voices. What you get is a feeling that perhaps you're acting in consonance with your meaning in the universe. Okay, that you're acting in consonance with what God wants of you as you can decipher it in his word. Okay, that's what we mean as religious people. We don't mean that we're sitting around and Jesus starts talking to us. Say, ha, this is Jesus. Okay, you don't, that's not what we mean. Mike Pence, I don't know why he has a Southern accent either, but the idea that Mike Pence is sitting around in, in the VP office waiting for Jesus to give him orders is insipid. I will also point out that Joy Behar would be the first person to say that men who say they are women are, do not have a mental illness. So if you're a man and you say you're a woman, you're not mentally ill. If you're a woman and you say you're a man, you're not mentally ill. But if you're a religious person and you say that you are trying to believe according to the dictates of Jesus and that you feel that you've gotten messages from Christ in your life, that this means that you're a full-on nutso. It's that sort of disdain for religion that is driving millions of people in the United States away from people like Joy Behar.